Moving on to politics now. Independent MHA Paul Lane is calling on the Liberal government to keep one of its election promises. In the Liberal Red Book, he says the Premier promised to start an all-party committee on democratic reform. That's where the Premier promised to look at ways to increase voter turnout, reform election finance laws so that they cover leadership contests, and require provincial parties to report finances biannually. Paul Lane is joining us live now. From the newsroom, Mr. Lane, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Heather. Pleasure to be here. What kind of limits would you like to see on the amount of money that can be donated to a political party or candidate? Well, I haven't looked at exact amounts, uh, but one of the uh, things I have written to Premier about is to try to take some of the big money out of politics. Uh, you know, whether it be uh, donations to a party, uh, you know, uh, during a, once the writ has been dropped for the purposes of an election, whether it be donations to an individual candidate or to a district association, or even donations that parties receive uh, in the interim years between elections, I think the amount of money is absolutely ridiculous. It's not necessary. And if we want to encourage more people to get involved uh, in politics, uh, I think that we need to start, you know, uh, looking at the, the money that's involved to, to get involved, to open it up to uh, uh, more people who want to offer themselves to the people. Mm -hmm. And speaking specifically of the candidates, why would you like to see a cap put on the amount of money, money that they can raise? Well, you know, quite frankly, um, an election is supposed to be about uh, deb debating ideas uh, for the benefit of the people, offering suggestions, putting out your platform, and that's the reason why uh, people are supposed to be electing candidates. Not based on who has the uh, most election signs, who has the most TV and radio ads, who can, uh, you know, afford to have the glassiest brochures and the most brochures. That's really not what it's supposed to be all about. It's supposed to be, like I said, debating ideas for the benefit of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another thing in your letter that many times, you know, of course, when you have to have a vote in the House of Assembly, MHAs now, of course, vote along their party lines. You want to get rid of that whipped voting. Can you tell us why you put that in the letter to the Premier as well? Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, and I think I can speak to this one firsthand. Uh, you know, people, uh, member, when people offer themselves to be uh, elected, they're elected by people in their district, and they're put there to represent the views of the people that they represent, not the views of the uh, people in charge of a particular political party. And uh, so when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, voting, whether it be on budget or whether it be on various pieces of legislation that could certainly impact uh, people in day-to-day -day life, I believe that MHAs should have the freedom to vote their conscience, to vote freely, to vote on behalf of the people who elected them. Mm, back to donations now for a second. What would you like to see done with corporate donations and union donations? Well, again, I just think that the, uh, we need to look at uh, the amount of money uh, which parties are currently operating on. We have to look at the amount of money that parties and individual candidates are spending in uh, you know, election contests. And, uh, and we have to look at then those laws that govern the amount of, uh, or that dictate the amount of money that's received in donations, and we have to set more reasonable limits. So I know like in a, in a district, I believe in the last provincial election, I'll just take my district as an example. I can't tell you what, exactly what I spent now off the top of my head, but I think I could have spent around $40,000, if I'm not mistaken, in my particular district. That's just as a candidate. I have to ask, is that really necessary? Do candidates need to have three or four brochures? Do they have to be glossy brochures? Do, they, do you need all these signs littering the environment? And how do we put people on a more level playing field so that, you know, new people getting involved, new parties getting involved, uh, you know, can, can, can uh, attest some of these seats in a reasonable manner without having, uh, you know, huge uh, corporate donations behind them. Mm -hmm. Lately, the, the biggest news concerning the provincial government has been about uh, the no-fall mini-budget. Why are you bringing up this concern now about democratic reform? Well, uh, you know, this is something that uh, uh, I've raised, uh, you know, for, it was something that I actually, you know, believed in for a long time. Uh, I think it's a very important issue. It's certainly something that I'm hearing from uh, people uh, uh, all the time, whether it be, uh, you know, just meeting them out on the street or whether it be through phone calls, emails, or social media. People are not satisfied with our current uh, electoral system. They don't feel that people are uh, being represented, that their views are being represented, and certainly we saw what happened to me when I decided to stand with the people of my district. I ended up being kicked out by the party, 
and uh, for, for voting the way that people in my district wanted me to vote. So I think if there was ever a time uh, for, elect, uh, for uh, democratic reform, the time has come. And uh, I'm certainly going to be doing everything I can to be pushing that agenda going forward. All right, Mr. Lane, we are out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me.